Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi, everyone. We'll just take a few minutes to make sure that everybody can get in, sort out any tech issues that anyone's having, because we all have those when it comes to these things these days. Perhaps while, uh, while we wait for a few more people to jump in, if you'd like to put in the chat uh, what country you're tuning in from. So both Sarah and I are very lucky to be tuning in from beautiful Wurundjeri Warrior on country. Um, but if you'd like to share whereabouts you are, that would be, that would be nice. If then you know the Aboriginal country that you're on, that would be excellent. Yeah. Yeah, just to make the distinction. And if you don't know, that's totally okay because we can um, tell you later on how you can find that out. Couple from Bunurong. Beautiful. Lovely. Nicole, you have a question. Nikki, sorry. Nikki, you have a question. You can pop it in the chat if you have a question. That's probably the best way because you can't speak at the moment. Um, so, yes. Lots of anyway. people from Bunurong coming in today. Um, yeah, if you do have a question, we do have our lovely Reckvic team behind the scenes. Uh, so do feel free. <laughs> That's all right, Nikki. Nikki. <laughs> uh, do feel free to ask questions in the chat throughout the webinar if you need. Um, and we they will um, be able to answer them for you as best we can. From Jara Country, hello, Renee. All right. I reckon we might get started, Sarah. What do you think? I think so too, Claire. Awesome. Let's jump right in. So today we're obviously going to be talking to you all about National Reconciliation Week. And um, before we go into any of the webinar, though, I would like to give an acknowledgement of country. So um, Reconciliation Victoria acknowledges the traditional owners of country throughout Victoria and recognises First Peoples' <coughs> continuing connection to the lands, waters and community. We acknowledge that this land was never ceded. We pay our respects to elders past and present who carry the memories, traditions, cultures and aspirations of First Peoples and who forge the path ahead for emerging leaders. We also honour and acknowledge the strength and resilience of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and also give a special acknowledgement to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that are joining us today. Lovely. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so just to give a brief overview of the webinar that we're running today. So we'll start off by uh, giving a quick introduction to ourselves as Claire and Sarah, uh, and then we'll go into a little bit about who we are here at Rec Vic and what we do. Um, then we'll spend a bit of time talking about the meaning and significance behind National Reconciliation Week, and then um, have a bit of a discussion about some ideas uh, for the classroom um, for you guys as educators around discussing the theme um, and um, of National Rec Week um, as well. So we'll start off, Sarah, I'll let you start with the introductions. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Sarah Joyce, and I am the new uh, Education Officer at Reconciliation Victoria. This is my first webinar in this series, so it's really exciting to be here with all of you. Lovely. Uh, and my name is Claire Hyatt and I am the Projects Officer here at Reconciliation Victoria. And we are going to have a little bit of a chat now about our own reconciliation uh, journeys, as we like to call them. So I have connections to Gunai Kurnai Mob uh, up in Gippsland, um, but this was actually a connection that uh, my family only made about 10 years ago, so when I was a teenager, and um, it kind of took me a while to um, connect and identify and understand that identity um, as it wasn't something that I grew up knowing. And, um, you know, I think this is a reflection of a lot of individuals' experiences across the country um, that 
identity and that family history wasn't made known. It was hidden. Um, and so I have kind of spent the last 10 years or so learning what that means to me and how I connect with this identity. And I think it wasn't until really I hit uh, university and I took um, subjects in Aboriginal cultures and history that and, and also began to sort of uh, learn a bit more about my own mob that um, I could connect with it a little bit more. And I think it also made me realise how little I was taught in school at the time. And I think that was your experience as well, Sarah, is that right? Yeah, most definitely. So my on reflection now, I was taught nothing of merit in, in school and probably what we'd deem as sort of lies or different, definitely misrepresentations of history um, and very similar to you, Claire. But I think an interesting point of distinction is that we're from a different generation. So my schooling experience was um, held at a particular time and then Claire's was a generation later but really the history was taught um, pretty much the same though although very mm. happily now things are really shifting in the space mm. um, but it, yeah the similar to Claire as well that I was only taught anything of importance when I went to university and I actually chose an elective which was uh, Indigenous Australia and it was really only then that I started to learn the truth about um, colonisation, invasion and its impacts. Um, but I guess my journey sort of continued and I, I consider it to be continuing to this day. I worked um, in a number of organisations alongside Aboriginal communities and elders and I was really blessed uh, and privileged to be able to um, be mentored by those people and for him, them to be my teachers but even at that point and subsequently I've reflect, reflected a lot on the fact that I needed to take more responsibility to self-educate myself more. Um, it was a fact that I wasn't taught anything in school but as an adult um, we all have we all can be learners. We should be learners for the remainder of our lives. So a little bit later on, I'll talk to you all about some of the ways I educate myself and continue to. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much, our story is pretty much aligned, but we wanted to share them with you so you can feel that perhaps your journey, you can hear some similarities in your journey and ours or reflect on your own reconciliation journey and your learnings um, from when you were younger through to now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> thanks for sharing that, Sarah. And as you mentioned, I think it's definitely important to understand that we are and will always continue to be on this journey of learning. So wherever you are, whoever's um, joining us today, wherever you are in your journey, that's okay. Um, and as long as you're willing to keep learning, that's what's important. Uh, so we will jump in now just to a brief introduction um, as to who we are here at RecVic. So we are the statewide body promoting reconciliation across Victoria and all of our work is done in partnerships with First Peoples and, and our aim is to support a deeper understanding of culture, respect and justice across the state. So we are a very small but we are a growing team so we've now got a staff um, a number of uh, staff. We've got seven staff joining us um, now on the team, which is awesome. And we are also supported by a board um, of uh, a mix of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as well. And we are also guided by an active cultural council, which consists of eight amazing Victorian elders. Um, and we are incredibly grateful for their generosity in their time and guidance and support that they provide us um, as well. Uh, we are fortunate to also have some amazing volunteers who have recently joined us, which is just fantastic because as a small team, it's very hard to be able to reach out across the state um, without those extra hands. So. We're very grateful for those for those volunteers as well. Uh, I thought as well as we enter the conversation today about National Reconciliation Week, um, it's just important for us to have that understanding of what reconciliation means uh, means to us as a RecVic team. 
and just acknowledging that this can be quite complex and can mean different things to different people. But to us, our definition of reconciliation is about Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Australians talking, walking and working together to overcome division and inequality between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Australians. So it's really about addressing and acknowledging our true history and righting our wrongs, which we will talk a little bit about today. Um, and as we discussed, it's not a one act, it's a, it's a journey and it requires commitment from non-Aboriginal Australians to really take ownership and responsibility for their learning and role in the process of reconciliation. So um, that kind of gives you an overview of how, how we view reconciliation uh, here in at the RecFit team. Uh, jumping, yep, thanks Poppy. So uh, we also just wanted to highlight that here in Victoria, we are in a very unique position um, and we are leading the way in advancing reconciliation across the state. So you may or may not have heard of the Uruk Truth Telling and Justice Commission. So this is the first formal truth telling process into the injustices experienced by First Peoples in Victoria. We also have treaty advancement um, and the First Peoples Assembly of Victoria is, is the voice for Aboriginal communities across the state. Um, and they're actually currently in their re-election process or will be starting their re-election process um, in, the, in the coming month. Uh, across in the local government space, we have our Victoria Aboriginal and Local Government Strategy. This is a five-year strategy for local governments and Aboriginal communities to strengthen partnerships and engage in shared decision-making. And that's all about supporting Aboriginal self-determination and reconciliation within your local councils. And then finally, we've got our truth telling um, about Australian history in Victorian education, which is a push from the Department of Education. And they're investing in this truth telling, as you'll probably be aware, it's been included in the Victorian curriculum. There's also the Marung Aboriginal Education Plan, which is focused on teaching your Koori students. Um, and then, yeah, there's also, yeah, it's a cross curriculum priority um, as well, as I mentioned. So we just wanted to jump in now, Poppy, if we could jump over to the, yeah, thank you. Um, and just wanted to ask you guys how confident you feel teaching Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and histories in your classroom. Now, if you haven't used Mentimeter before, um, if you've got your iPhone handy and you would like to, oh, can we go back to the screen, Poppy? Sorry. Um, if you haven't used Mentimeter before, it's uh, it gives you live results. So it'll, it'll all be anonymous. But um, if you'd like to grab your iPhone or phone handy, if you've got that handy and just scan the QR code. Um, and mm -hmm. then what we can do is see what, what you all are putting in uh, live. And Poppy's going to share that um, with us. But we'll just give you a sec to, um, to, to scan the QR code. And if you do have issues scanning the QR code, you can go to mentimeter.com down the bottom and in the chat oh, awesome. will just pop. Oh, most people are great with it. Um, but, yes, if you if you need the code, there we go. The code's mm -hmm. just in there. So you can go to mentimeter.com and put in that code and you'll be able to access <clears throat> this poll if it doesn't work with the QR code for you. That's great. Thanks, everybody, for doing that. Mm -hmm. I like that we can all see um, yeah. how everybody's sitting with it. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's good to acknowledge that perhaps you're not feeling super confident mm. um, and that's something that, you know, we recognise and understand and it's great that you're here with us today. Hopefully we can help you feel a little bit more confident um, in teaching about Aboriginal cultures and histories in your classroom. Um, but it looks like most of you feel reasonably confident, which is great. If you can't access the QR code, just go to menti.com, like it says at the top of the screen here, and pop in the code 39278210. Thank you, Alex. All right, we'll, we'll give a few more, let a few more people respond. If you want to quickly jump on, if you haven't already. Awesome. Fabulous. I love that everyone's. So quick with the technology. It's yeah, great. <laughs> fantastic. All right. 
Thanks, Poppy. I think we'll we'll jump back to the presentation now, but it was really great to see uh, those responses and get a bit of an understanding of how you as educators are feeling in this space. <clears throat> now we're having the technical issues. <laughs> it's still showing the mentee. Yep. <laughs> All good. Um, well, while Poppy's doing that, I'll just um, give a little bit of an introduction to National Reconciliation Week. As you know, this is the main topic for today. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick overview um, that so this week is organised by Reconciliation Australia. So they are the national reconciliation organisation. Um, and each year they create the theme um, which can which aims to provide a focus on learning about our shared histories cultures and achievements and also to be able to explore how each of us can continue to contribute to achieving reconciliation in Australia so you may be aware from the name of the webinar but this year's theme is be the voice for generations and Sarah is going to have a bit more of a chat about this later on in the discussion um, but I will just note as well um, that Reconciliation Australia also run an educational resource platform called Naragunawali. We're going to have a chat about this later as well, but I just wanted to note that all of these things are coming under Reconciliation Australia. Um, all right. So you may or may not know, but the National Reconciliation Week is marked by two significant um, dates, which are milestones in the reconciliation journey. So you'll see on the 27th of May um, marks the anniversary of the 1967 referendum. And then the 3rd of June marks the High Court Marbo decision. So um, the 1967 referendum saw Australia vote to change the Australian constitution to give the Australian government power to make laws for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and also recognise them in the census. Um, there is a really great resource um, which we might be able to share uh, with you. It's called Right Wrongs and it's um, created by the ABC. And it just gives you a really good introduction and your students potentially, if you wanted to share with them, uh, right wrongs, the 1967 referendum, our constitution and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander lives. And that's with the ABC. Uh, Alex might be able to share it in the chat with you. Uh, as I mentioned, the 3rd of June marks the 1992 Mabo decision in which the High Court recognised um, the, uh, that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the traditional owners and custodians of land. Um, and the Mabo case was a really significant legal case in Australia, um, which recognised the Merriam people as the traditional owners of the Murray Islands in the Torres Strait. Uh, and it was particularly significant because it challenged that myth of terra nullius in the, that the land belonged to no one uh, when settlers arrived. So I think I just wanted to highlight these dates because they're a really, really good opportunity for you to embed truth telling into your into your conversations because just sharing what the significance of those dates mean is a truth telling opportunity and particularly around the myth of terra nullius uh, I think is really important and then of course the referendum is a very topical conversation this year knowing that we have our voice referendum coming up um, teaching your students about the significance and the importance and the impact that this referendum this 1970 sorry 67 referendum had is really is really great opportunity as well uh thanks poppy <clears throat> so i guess on just to wrap up about nrw um before we jump onto a little bit more about the theme and how you can embed it in the classroom i suppose uh as i mentioned um just then about the you know the opportunity there for truth telling celebrating and um and embedding activities International Reconciliation Week in your school is a really great time for us to to, to all continue our learning um, and explore how we as educators as, and as students as well can contribute to achieving reconciliation in, in Australia. So I think we, both Sarah and I, um, thought it was really important to highlight that this is something um, that that you can focus on throughout the entire year and although the week provides you this opportunity to sort of continue your learning as you you know learn a bit more about what the theme means or 
um, to do some particular activities, it's something that we would encourage educators and, and all reconciliation supporters to be considering over the entire year. So if you already implement reconciliation activities or initiatives throughout your school and in your classroom, um, perhaps seeing National Reconciliation Week as an opportunity to celebrate and progress these activities, um, particularly with as the theme comes out different each year, um, or an opportunity to learn something new might be a nice way to view the week. Um, if you are new to the space or you're wanting to, to start implementing some stuff into your classroom, you could see this week, National Reconciliation Week, as a launching pad and an opportunity to continue your learning, um, which you can carry through for the entire year. So um, we just wanted to highlight that as while it's really it's great to be able to celebrate during this week, it's also really important for us to continue our learning and any activities or initiatives that you begin in this week throughout the entire year, because um, that's how we can continue to make progress as well. Lovely. All right, so I think I'll pass over to you now, Sarah, and you can have a bit more of a chat about um, how we can bring the theme, Be the Voice for Generations, into life in the classroom. Definitely. Thank you, Claire. And just to give everyone a little bit of a quote from Reconciliation Australia CEO Karen Rundine, she says the theme calls on Australians to honour the work of generations past who fought for justice in Australia and worked together today to tackle the unfinished business of reconciliation for generations to come. So I think that's um, a lovely quote. <clears throat> I think in this part of the webinar, we're really going to talk to you about unpacking the theme because it is a pretty big statement. And um, we here at the team have broken it down into sort of three different ways that you can talk about the different kind of voices from the past, from the present, and how you can, your students and broader community can be a voice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people now. So we're going to um, <clears throat> show you another Mentimeter. And in the Mentimeter, we're going to ask if you recognize these two voices from the past. So if again, if people wanna use the QR code, um, Yes, definitely. We can put that in the chat. So, yes, Alex has just put up the mentee address and the QR code. And then also there's um, yeah, the QR code on the screen. So does anybody know this change maker? This voice from the past. It's totally okay if you don't. I will explain later, so <laughs> you'll be able to share this information um, with your school community and broader community too, because that's one of the things I love about this particular area. <clears throat> the knowledge can be shared um, with everybody that you gain, and it's a lovely way of thinking about this, that we're all learners in this space. You're educators, so you're imparting knowledge all the time, which was amazing but you can also be learners at the same time. And I think that's a really nice leveler as well for, between you and the, the people that you're educating too. And it's also showing that we all take responsibility for, for changing this space through our knowledge gathering. <clears throat> Just give a minute or so more to see if anyone else wants to um, say if they know this change maker. <clears throat> I think that's everybody then. So for those who didn't know, this is William Barak. So he was an activist, an artist, a cultural ambassador and an educator um, in Victoria. He played a major role in advancing <clears throat> Aboriginal rights in Victoria and pro protecting his culture. He was a Wurundjeri man of the Woiwurrung people and he was born in 1823. He, along with his cousin, worked to establish and protect the self-sufficient community of Conondirk. I'm not sure if people have heard of that particular area. That's a good learning point. If you haven't, take a note of that place and then you can find out um, through some research later. But it's near Hillsville. Um, and when his cousin died, he succeeded him as the leader of the Woiwurrung people in that area. He engaged in negotiations with the... Victorian 
government of that time, walks to parliament in protest um, and worked really hard to protect, even though it was uh, a mission space, um, worked hard to protect um, the self-sufficiency and autonomy that the Aboriginal people had at Corrin Dirk. So he also learned, sorry, he also taught um, the, his people at Corrin Dirk about culture and um, history through paintings, keeping their customs alive because it was actually banned by the colonisers to practice um, Aboriginal customs in that area. So we'll go to the next Mentimeter because we've got another change maker from the past that we were curious if you knew about her. <clears throat> so again, um, yes, you can just use the menti.com um, because the QR code is not there. So <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you all that in my research, I didn't actually know who this person was either. And I'm so glad I do now. So <laughs> even working at Reconciliation Victoria in this space, I guess it's a little personal share that I know that I don't know everything and it's a constant learning journey for me as well. <clears throat> so this woman is Margaret Tucker and she was one of Australia's earliest female Aboriginal activists and indeed a major figure in the 20th, 20th century um, in regards to this space. She grew up on missions at Kamaragundra and Munakara missions before being forcibly removed from her family at the age of 13. She was put into service, which is very common for people, girls particularly, who were removed from their families. <clears throat> and she worked and lived in not great conditions for um, a large number of time in Melbourne. But... Um, through connections and community in 1932, she was actually a founding member and treasurer of the Australian Aborigines League, one of the first Aboriginal run organisations in um, Australia. She also played a vital role in establishing the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service, which is a crucial service that lasts to this day for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Victoria. Um, and she was also a patron of the Victorian Aboriginal Child Care Agency. So, I mean, that's just a really small snippet <clears throat> of her achievements in her lifetime, which were phenomenal and have a really lasting impact for um, Aboriginal people in the state today. So I just wanted to share with you, and yes, I saw a thing pop up in the chat where we found this. We can share some links. And we will, um, at, for all participants in this webinar, in a couple of days, you'll get a document um, where we found a lot of this research, but a lot of it's really readily available online too. So um, yeah, so there's two, two examples of voices from the past, which I think are really important to share because in my <clears throat> learning in school, I was talked about Captain Cook and Matthew Flinders as, as voices of history. Well, We've just shared two really lovely um, examples of really strong Aboriginal leaders from the past. So we will now go into another slide, another Mentimeter, Poppy, yes, to ask if people know these change makers or these voices from the present. So if everyone wants to jump back into Mentimeter as well. <clears throat> Oh, Margaret Tucker or Auntie Marg is affectionately known from some websites that I found. Yeah, no problem. Oh, this one's nearly 50-50. Thank you, Alex. That's okay. If you don't know, that's fine. It's not like a pass or fail exam. We're just really curious about exploring everybody's um, knowledge in this space and also um, not being feeling ashamed that you don't know. That's why I shared before that I didn't know um, Margaret Tucker before this. I was researching this webinar. So, um, okay. So I think everyone's probably had a vote for this one. So this is Linda Burney. 
She is a Wiradjuri woman from New South Wales and she was the first Aboriginal woman elected to the New South Wales Parliament and the first Aboriginal woman to serve in the House of Representatives. She's the currently a member of the Labor government um, <clears throat> and is very active in the current space around the referendum and the voice to Parliament. And I'll just give you a little snippet from her first speech to Parliament where she stated that I was born at a time when the Australian government knew how many sheep there were, but not how many Aboriginal people. I was 10 years old before the 1967 referendum fixed that. So I guess that just feeds back to the importance of the 67 referendum that Claire mentioned in her present part of the presentation before. So um, I guess one way of finding out <coughs> who current Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices are is to pay attention to the media. I know some people don't necessarily want to watch the news all the time and that's okay. Um, but later on in the webinar, we'll share some ideas where you can perhaps go to some more independent sources um, or indirect sources of news to figure out how you can be more familiar with um, current Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices. So we'll go but one more Mentimeter in this space where I'll ask you if you know this change maker and this voice. So if everyone wants to vote once again. <coughs> Just acknowledging that this picture is of someone who is has passed away and who is no longer with us. Their family has given permission to the wider community for their photo to be used, however. <clears throat> okay, so this is... I'll just wait, maybe I'll have dumped the gun there. People are still voting. <laughs> Give you another second before I um I'll let you know who this is. So this lovely photo of this kind of wonderful man, this is Uncle Archie Roach. And he passed away um very recently. So there's still a lot of sadness in the broader community about his passing. He um died at the age of 66. He was a singer-songwriter, a guitarist, a writer, and an activist. Um, you might know his song, which was the most famous, although he's a very prolific artist. He wrote many, many songs um, about his experience um, as an Aboriginal people growing up, person growing up in Australia. Um, his most famous songs took the children away, and it described his own very agonizing and painful story of being stolen from his family um, and I guess in the process it helped to educate broader Australia about one of the darkest chapters of our history the stolen generations so he was a very important person not for the wider not just for the wider community but for Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people as well because through his lyrics he spoke to the broader community about um, the experiences that that they were having. Um, and he is very, very connected also to his partner, Ruby Hunter, who's also passed away, who combined their musical genius, I would like to call it, to um, sing amazing songs about their life. So this is hopefully a really exciting jumping off point for you to both go and find out more about these change makers and these voices, but to also um, recognise that there are so many phenomenal opportunities for you to talk about and elevate Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices um, in, in your classroom. So I guess we'll leap to, yes, we've got another Mentimeter now because this one is a word cloud. So we would love you to go again to Mentimeter <clears throat> either via the QR code um, <clears throat> or through the app with the code, which will be up in a second. And we would love you to pop in a couple of words about how you think you can use your voice in this space. 
because obviously the people we've talked about as examples use their voice in a different way. But if you're a non-Aboriginal person, how can you use your voice as an ally in this space? Um, and if you are an Aboriginal person, how you want to amplify or help others to amplify um, your voice in this space. So, yeah, <clears throat> this one's a word cloud. So just input some words and they should, technology not failing us, should all start appearing on the screen. If this doesn't work for some reason, then um, please feel free to pop your um, your comments in the chat. And it seems like this one isn't working. So look, you know, you win some, you lose some with technology. <laughs> so if everyone, yeah. I can jump in, um, Sarah. And yes. I think one of the ways that I like to use my voice <clears throat> to advance mm. reconciliation is um, pro by providing uh, our acknowledgements of country as that just popped up. Isn't that funny? Um, so yeah, we might have, I don't know if you might have a chat about this later, but um, I have, I am part of a local footy team and I've recently started doing an acknowledgement of country before every single game um, and acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we get to play. And that's just a small way that I've been able to use my voice and um, create awareness around this space as well. So mm. just thought I'd highlight there. But now we've got lots of words in. We do. It's working. Hooray. Oh, this is lovely and dynamic. And I, yep, it's really exciting to see everybody's ideas what we might be able to do is I think we afterwards we can take a screenshot of this particular word cloud yeah. so we can share that with the participants afterwards as well some, because it's some really great things in here mm, really great so I guess while everyone's still doing that I'll, I'll keep talking um, because these are all extraordinary ways to elevate your voice in the classroom I guess I just want to talk about a couple in particular and one of them is both cultural awareness and or understanding and I think that's been a theme that we've talked about throughout this webinar as um, but I just really like to highlight highlight the importance of that I know teaching in this area is a core part of the curriculum which is amazing but I think also to be able to teach it well, um, like I had to do, I had to go and research some people from as part of this webinar. We need to make sure we have <clears throat> taken the time to become as culturally aware as we can. And there's a number of amazing ways to do that, including one of our past webinars, which um, we can share possibly in the chat. Alex, that would be amazing. If not, we can send it to you as a resource. But there are many other ways too that you can um, become more culturally aware. And there's a lot of professional development opportunities which you could investigate with your school. Another thing I want to talk about too, because it comes up a lot when we speak to um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this space, which you may or may not be aware of, and it's something called cultural loading. And so I guess I just wanted to make you aware of that term because it is incredibly important to check in with elders, <clears throat> traditional owners and others if you're doing something really significant like naming your school in a local language word or wanting some direct information, historical information about the land that your school is on. But I guess I, in this space, there is also a lot of opportunity for you to undertake self-learning first, potentially, before approaching um, traditional owners. We don't want to discourage you from doing that because it is really important to stay connected and um, to have really great input from elders and traditional owners. But there are a small number of those people and they can become very loaded with lots of inquiries and questions. Um, I thought of a really lovely way that if you wanted to have an elder um, come to your school to talk or to consult, um, that perhaps you could contact neighbouring schools in your area and then combine together and then invite the elder to that meeting and so that their time, their very valuable time, um, <clears throat> can be used in a really constructive way rather than the same inquiry from different schools. That's a really lovely opportunity for you to also connect with local schools in your area and learn from each other about what's happening in the space. 
Another thing I wanted to touch on too was cultural confidence. And I guess that flows on really from cultural awareness and cultural understanding. So I feel personally that the more I learn in this space, I sort of realize how little I know, but that doesn't actually decrease my confidence. It actually does increase my confidence in this area because I know when I need to ask questions, I know that I don't know everything. And I know that I have to keep learning. And to me, rather than being an arduous thing, it's a really exciting space because every time I find out something new in this area, I feel more enriched by it, really. And I also love sharing the information that I find out there too. So Poppy, if we could just get out of the lovely word cloud, which we will share with you later because that's, um, yeah, a beautiful piece of reflection from everyone and go back into the slides. So I just reiterate really what Claire said um, and it's been a continuing theme throughout this webinar, really the strong importance of continuing the theme outside Reconciliation Week, continuing it all year um, and really trying to find the time and prioritize the time for self-education and we'll go to some ideas about that later. But <clears throat> I know people are time poor. However, I think in this space, I personally don't like making excuses for myself in that sense. I make the time and I find the time. And there can be really innovative ways of doing that um, in, in you know, our busy lives. And I think sort of the more you start looking out for things, the more you see. So you become tuned in to a particular um, with a particular lens so another really great way we can use our voices both as individuals and educators but also in the classroom is um, as an ally so amplifying Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices and that touches back on what Claire was saying as well about truth telling if you're teaching your students um, the true history of this country then it's a very different experience for them growing up and you are amplifying Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices to your students. <clears throat> and lastly, really topical way, and this is not a definitive list by the way, this is just a, a small snippet of ways you can talk about and amplify the voices, is um, talking about the voice to parliament, the referendum in the classroom. Now that might be more appropriate for later primary school age children or middle primary school through to high school, but I think still even in the younger years and early learning, we can still <clears throat> talk about the theme that having an active voice is a really important thing. So Poppy, next slide, please. So ways to reach out to um, key organisations. Local government is a fabulous resource for you. Organisations that have wraps, and that can include Narragana Wally um, and Reconciliation Australia, who can help you with your wrap journey and education there. Victorian Aboriginal Education Association Incorporated, VAI. This is a phenomenal resource, and I really encourage you to check out their calendar of events and dates throughout the year. Your CASO, your Query Education Support Officer. Um, and lastly, traditional, well, not lastly, this is a, not, again, a definitive list, but traditional owner groups um, about some of the things I talked about there. Um, so a few ideas for talking to the topic. And again, look, feature to the topic. This is not definitive. This is to try and spark just a bit of imagination in you. This is the, we're going to talk about Narragana Wally, um, which is reconciliation in education through um, reconciliation in Victoria. So we'll just watch a really short video about what they're about. The lands on which we live and learn hold many stories. Some new, some old. Some yet to be heard, some yet to be told. Narragunawali, named after the Ngunnawal word, meaning alive, well-being, coming together and peace, is a program designed by educators for educators and everyone in the community 
schools and early learning services can get involved by embracing our land's deep history and fostering knowledge and pride in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, cultures and contributions. Reconciliation action plans can be developed through the Narragunawali online platform to guide educational institutions to make commitments to reconciliation in the classroom, around the school or service, and with the community. Professional learning and curriculum resources are on hand to support educational communities build relationships, strengthen respect, and create opportunities. Whether you're a principal, teacher, parent, student, or community member, your journey is important and Narragunawali is here to guide you every step of the way. Reconciliation Australia invites you to join the Narragunawali community and be a part of the national movement towards reconciliation. Together, through education, we're shaping Australia's next chapter. Um, thank you, Poppy. In terms of the uh, talking about the voice, we're actually doing an, a webinar in um, in our series just solely on the voice. So um, this webinar is going to be a part of a series of webinars throughout the year. So we'll be focusing on the voice, but um, as long with the resources that we send from this webinar, we can definitely include some uh, information about the voice because I think, yeah, it's really, it is quite a an area where the confidence is required to have the difficult conversations and information builds confidence um so yes no that's a little bit of a it's a be a voice for generations so be a voice for generations Poppy, could you go back to the previous slide thanks is um the theme for national reconciliation week and the voice to parliament just happens to be occurring in the same year so um, yeah, the theme itself, Narragunna Wally and um, National, I'm sorry, Reconciliation Australia have um, quite an explanation on their website if you want to pop over there to differentiate between the theme, which interweaves with the voice, but it's not part of the voice referendum per se. So we're just showing you a couple of screenshots from Narragunna Wally's website. Now we really, really encourage you to join up to Narragunawali if you haven't already. It's free and it's a phenomenal resource for teachers. Not only does it have curriculum resources and lesson plans for teachers, it also has professional learning um, and I further ideas for action for your school. So I also really love that it's split into three categories. So um, it's not leaving out the early learning space. And even in within the primary section, those who have been into it already will know there is it's split into upper primary and lower primary levels because there's quite a significant difference in the comprehension and age of those two groups. So um, as you can see, they have a lot of really specific um, lesson plans on there. Well, not from this slide, but if you go into the actual Narragani Wally website, they do. And um, they on there they have very specific ideas on how you can um, bring the theme into the classroom. So rather than me sort of reiterating the ideas you can read on the website there, I want you to go and look at those ideas, but I'm gonna share a couple on top of those just to deepen um, your ability to teach. And again, to, to mirror what Claire said, we really don't want you to just teach to it this week if you can, but if you can use these ideas to spread across to the broader academic year, it will um, enrich your students' understanding of the space. So I think um, one lovely way that you can teach to this in the classroom is to talk, if you are just going to limit it to the week, you could talk about a different Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice each day and use some of the examples that I gave today, but also through the Changemaker website, which I think um, I think Alex has shared in the chat. If not, we'll share it with you afterwards and some other phenomenal resources out there. You can um, talk about those themes 
but you really you can continue it throughout the year and one way of doing that would be on for middle and older kids is doing ongoing assignments and projects about where students have to choose a voice themselves either for younger primary school students making a poster for older students an essay and unpacking not only just what that person did but the significance um, that that person's voice had for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Now, I don't know if anybody was astute enough to recognise that I didn't read our acknowledgement exactly as it was on the screen. And I personalised ours a little bit. I kept the core of what we feel and what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people feel should be in an acknowledgement, but I personalised it a bit with some of my comments. So it's a really, really fabulous way of having a very strong voice. If you do that, it shows as a school community and as individuals that you put extra thought and care into the acknowledgement. Um, so one lovely way I think you can do that in the classroom is having your students draft it, either as a group themselves or leaded by you. Um, you could even have a whole of school activity where there's a competition and it could be really draw everyone in the community in. <clears throat> I really would encourage you to go and have a look at Berry Street School and have a look at their acknowledgement. They've got one of the most beautiful personalised acknowledgements that I've come across in a long time. And with their permission, they... Um, let me talk about that today and encourage you to go have a look at it um, and you know use it as inspiration for your acknowledgement. Um, there are some guidelines for schools uh, for things to include in your acknowledgement but you can find those through the Victorian um, education platform really easily if you just search for um, education guidelines for acknowledgements. It gives you a few key points that you need to include and that's obviously always acknowledging the traditional country that we are on. So I think that's a really lovely way of getting the students involved and understanding the importance of an acknowledgement <clears throat> because it's really we are living and working and playing on Aboriginal land and for Aboriginal people who have a strong connection to the land, it's really important for us as non-Aboriginal people in this space to make an acknowledgement. And lastly, you could create a yarning circle in your classroom and there are really amazing resources which can guide you in this space. And I will share one as part of the resources at the end um, of this webinar or in our pack that we send out to you. Um, it's a really lovely way both for older students and younger students to sit and communicate in an open circular manner about a particular topic and as we're talking about National Reconciliation Week we can talk about voices that we can continue using yarning circles in your classrooms throughout the academic year on different topics. So we're nearly reaching the end of our webinar so I would just love to share a few ideas for self-education for you Please listen to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander podcasts and voices. They're very easy to find. You can find them on um, Apple Podcasts and on Google Podcasts on Spotify. Read independent media. Indigenous X is just one example of many. Um, you can find many of their articles on The Guardian, but there's also a website there, and that's solely Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices. You can also follow Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices on social media. And if you don't really know who to follow, pick one of um, maybe pick someone who is a current personality that you know and then look at who they follow and start following the people that they follow and you'll have an exponential knowledge explosion <laughs> in your social media fields. And that's a really easy way too of fitting something into a busy life because we're often checking social media all the time and if you're having those voices just come up in your feed every day, then you're sort of learning without, um, you know, having to read whole academic articles, which are lovely and important, but to hear some um, contemporary voices as well is really amazing. A couple of the podcasts I love, um, one is Speaking Out, that's an ABC podcast, and also Frontier War Stories, so that's two really lovely examples. We can pop a couple of more in the 
the learning pack for you afterwards. And please don't forget it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey um, in, in figuring out this space. It really is something that Claire, I and everyone at Reconciliation Victoria um, feels very strongly that it's a lifelong journey and it's one that we're really, really excited and passionate about being on. So, <laughs> yeah. One last Mentimeter before the end. We'd just love to get your opinion after this webinar. Do you feel a little bit more confident about teaching this material after what we've presented today? So one last time, the QR code and we'll pop up the Mentimeter. Yep, love. Oh, this was an additional one. We can just skip past that one, Poppy. Yep. Okay, great. Yay. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. I was going to say, Sarah, as well, mm. if you are um, also interested in staying up to date with what's happening with the voice mm. referendum, um, we. Uh, I would also encourage you to follow the Uluru statement on your socials as well, because they're always putting up more information and resources and things like that. And also our website, Reconciliation Victoria, um, mm. has a page dedicated to the voice to parliament. So Alex might be able to pop that in the chat for you now. If you did want to go have a look, we have a whole heap of links to further resources and information and things like that as well. So just wanted to highlight that. Yes, 23 is also a really mm. lovely um, resource and you might have seen some of their advertisements start to come out um, mm. about the voice as well on the referendum. But this is really, really encouraging. And for those who are no and unsure, it's totally okay because everyone starts um, in a different space and it really, we have gone over a lot of material really quickly. And I think um, you going and checking some of the resources that we will share and have shared throughout this presentation will hopefully build your confidence more. And please know that we're going to have one of these every roughly three weeks for the remainder of the year on different topics. So please look out for, um, for them. And we really encourage you to come to as many as you can, rather than just coming to one to think you'll just teach directly to that topic. The idea behind these is to just broaden your knowledge overall to increase your cultural confidence in teaching in this space. And I'd lastly like to just end by saying that we have a beautiful breakfast on the 30th of May for Reconciliation Week. Um, the details are up on our socials. We'd love you to come. We know that a lot of you are teachers and might not be able to attend a weekday breakfast, but we'll have um, the amazing Annie Jill Gallagher as our keynote speaker. So it will be a fabulous morning, both for learning and for networking. Yeah. Thank you all very much for coming. Um, and as Sarah mentioned, hopefully we'll see you in our future webinars. Thanks so much, everybody. Hope to see you really soon.